So I'll call to the meeting to order. We have a quorum. Uh, first order of business is the public session. I don't see anyone or see or anyone who might on the phone from the general public who might want to address us. So let's just move on to the minutes from our August 12th meeting. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? I make the motion. Okay, Jean, were you seconding that motion? And, and Aki, third, we have three, we have it done. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Okay, let's prove the minutes. Um, before we move to Marie's report, does anyone on the council have any announcements that they wanna make? Um, you know, I'll once again remind you that there's a, uh, uh, an in-person show tomorrow night from five to seven um, as part of Arts Night Out. That's great. <laughs> now I'm, I'm going out of town, otherwise I would be there. Um, any other announcements anyone has? Then Marie, we'll move to your report. Uh, let's see. Highlights, well, hit the highlights for us, right? Right, yeah. So I'm in the wrong. Um, so we are, we are waiting. I, I will hear from the count, um, the Board of Health tomorrow about uh, potential um, changes to, to any changes to building use um, rentals and things, but we're we are just, you know, enforcing a higher level of, of protection here just because they, uh, because of the population we work with. So they're advising social distancing. We still haven't had that, you know, a huge number of people coming, but it's definitely increased. Um, and um, let's see, um, sorry, I'm, I need to look at my email because I'm not finding my report in front of me. Just wondering if I accidentally labeled it August and not September. I think I did. I did. Okay. It says September on the front, but it's okay. So um, we have new staff on board. So be sure and say hello. We'll introduce you when you come by. Um, um, Megan and Samantha have been here for a, at least a couple of weeks now. Um, very, very helpful. And uh, Cassie, our new principal clerk is now uh, on board. And so we're, we're really well set up for improved customer service and uh, renewals are going really well. Um, you know, there's been some grumblings, but um, generally people have been understanding once they go through it. Um, painting's gonna begin tomorrow. I thought it was gonna start today, uh, but we had some last minute consulting around colors and settled um, settled that today. So they'll start tomorrow. It's going to be a zero VOC paint. So we're letting people know through Facebook um, and constant contact that, because we do have some people who have expressed concerns about that um, in terms of chemical sensitivities. Um, the friends group is um, going to be having a table at the elections, which now are going to be entry from the great room outside. And so we're gonna be having a bake sale and uh, fundraiser outside. Um, the lobby will be closed because of painting and um, we're not expecting a huge turnout anyway, but... Um, and we also decided to do the holiday fun uh, pie fundraiser again this year. So spread the word about that. Um, um, let's see. Uh, curbside lunch has been a little bit slow to start. I think we've had like three, three or four people ordering curbside and then seven to eight people in the dining room. Um, Fitness, fitness orientations are going well. People are working out in the gym during hours when orientations aren't going on. Um, let's see. 
Uh, and we have delayed uh, return to on-site fitness classes uh, due to Delta and, and people's concerns and wanting to stay on Zoom for now. So, but also we're working with IT to kind of really get situated with technology to, to start that up hopefully in November. Um, so that's kind of an overview. Um, I did, one thing I meant to say too about, um, I, I didn't put on my report is just that I did set up a donations page on the city website um, and also a meal payment page on the city website, which is only, you can, you seniors, people over 60 can't pay on the city website. They can only pay on site here or through my active center, but for the general public and for people 55 to 59, people can pay on the city website for lunches. I just didn't want to make the $5 option available uh, to non-members um, and to non-60 year olds. <laughs> uh, I mean, to 60 year olds, because uh, we want those people to become members. Um, and um, the donations page I'm excited about because um, it, I designed it so that people can do a one-time donation or they can sign up for uh, like reoccurring payments, like a subscription. So they could do planned giving. They could say, I'm gonna give $10 a month to spread out my planned giving basically. Um, so they can do it quarterly, annually. Um, and then if, check out the donations page because we I also included things about in, in, um, including uh, legacy giving in your will. Um, just, you know, a little blurb about that. Um, but all the different ways to give, including items, like because people often have questions about donations of items and they'll show up here with the stuff and then feel mad because it's not stuff we'll take. And so it, just giving them that information ahead really helps to, um, and also we have, before the pandemic even, I, I made up a sheet of, the kinds of items that people often want to donate and where they can take them if we don't take them. So, um, so yeah. And so, and then just in terms of the building upgrades, um, hoping to have our, our new granite countertop by mid October and paintings happening and then flooring is yet to be scheduled. So. So the, um, you know, the Valley Gifts thing that we talked about when I was down there earlier, um, can we put a link to that on the city web page? It's, um, it's on there. Yep. Okay. So there's about the friends group also and how to join and how, um, how to contribute and what the recent, you know, the most recent fundraiser is that they're conducting. That's great. Yeah. So if you have any feedback though about either of those pages, I'd love to hear it because, um, you know, fresh eyes are always good. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. Can you remind us, going back to one of the first things you said, remind us what the new program assistants are, their roles are. So the staff, their staff assistants. So before we had Michael and Nate and Chris, and those were part-time positions. And so um, I, negotiated, you know, it was quite a, a long process, but I negotiated restructuring the staffing with the mayor. And yeah. so we will now have three full-time staff assistants um, and they have a higher level of skill than our previous staff assistant position required. Um, and so they're, they're a lot more admin and help with um, Nancy marketing stuff. And also, um, you know, basically just, I mean, it's always been kind of a guy gal Friday kind of job where they just, they can do just about anything, but um, some of our staff assistants before didn't have computer skills or things like that. So now um, we're just going to, I just thought this restructuring would really enable us to provide a much higher level of customer service and consistency, and it would help us to um, get out of needing to rely on volunteers at reception, which which off, often created a lot of confusion because those volunteers weren't always able to keep up with 
um, changes that we would make and um, you know information that we were trying to convey would change and there were so many of them and they would only come in once a week and so often we were giving out the wrong information and so customer service was kind of shoddy sometimes and so this is just going to be much more um, the flow is going to be better um, customer assistance will be such you know much more um, accurate and um, and consistent and um, and then we also have you know more support from full-time staff um, right. that and less turnover and anyway it's it's just a much better arrangement so I, I had the you know fortunate uh, that you know the mayor was was going out of office so he was feeling generous I guess <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it Jerry Ann, you had a question um, the people that were volunteering, are we going to find other alternatives for them to get the tax write off? Because I think that probably quite a few of those long term volunteers, that's one of the reasons they were doing it. Well, we, we created new volunteer opportunities. So um, we certainly always, um, since I get to all the applicants, um, we always snatch up the really good ones. So, um, so, um, you know, I think um, we always find ways to to put place people in positions and <clears throat> help. Um, and also, we've already um, gotten a lot of the receptionists who were really, you know, sort of our primo receptionists um, who who wanted to come back. Um, in Janet's already working with them to be ambassadors, so um, some of them have already started. That's great. I know, I know I've had to share this with Marie, but when we were still in Memorial Hall back in the olden days, that front first position was always a paid one. It was never a volunteer one. So we had, um, yeah. for the whole time I was there from the mid seventies <laughs> to the mid nineties, it was always paid staff. Yeah, I mean, that that's not the norm, I think in COAs, mm -hmm. um, but, but I, I argued with the mayor about that because he said, you know, isn't that how all COAs run or senior centers run? And I said, that's not the point. <laughs> the point is we need to have good customer service and, um, and get frustrated when they're put in a position like that, where they can't, um, like we wanted them to upgrade to using computers and they, most of them didn't want to do that. And so they're, you know, this is this is a better situation and, and I think the volunteers will be happier. So I mean Janet can speak to all of that. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is Val. I can speak to that as well. When I volunteered, the information flow was a bit stretched, like what you're talking about. But we felt like things changed, we didn't know. And we are the focal for information and we we want to give them the right information when they come in. So I, I can relate to what you're saying as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Any so other? yeah, I think we're just we're we're getting really we're getting everything sort of queued up and in line, um, you know, to to flow in the best ways possible. And I, we've had a lot of time to think about it um, and prepare for it. Um, and we had that focus group before the pandemic, which really just really sort of clinched the deal. Like basically, we. Um, we knew what the problems were and the focus group really confirmed those things. So. Yes, they were a great bunch, that focus group. Marie, anything else or anyone have questions of Marie or comments? Uh, Marie, I have one on that uh, young lady that con contacted us to join the council. Uh, somebody let her know where the applications were and all that other information and how- yeah. I take her. Yeah, I had a conversation with her this afternoon. And actually what Marie shared at the beginning before most of you got on is that the mayor is not making any appointments for the duration of his term. So she won't be able to join until there's a new mayor in January. Yeah, it might actually take till February. Right, right. But January, the earliest part, even for people who are queued up, you're right. It's not going to be day one, make a whole bunch of appointments. Yeah, but she may attend things before then, sure. anyway. Yeah, she could still 
I come on as a somebody from the public and sure. show the meeting. And she can get engaged, Janet, as a volunteer when right. that, a number of ways. So that there, I think there are ways to meet her where she is right now and help her get yeah. engaged if she wants to. And she certainly just given her resume would bring an enormous depth of experience. Yeah, so. Cindy, did you see that before I forwarded it to you today? Did you I'm see sorry? that? No, I did didn't. So, uh, oh, yeah. it was kind of yeah, weird. I, I, Marie's going to help me figure out how to stop you, have, have those things from that mail cop box come to me versus you. Get that off, get off that off your list. Yeah. Um, anything else, Marie, before we move on to Janet? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Janet, it's yours. Sure. So good segue talking about, I, I certainly will reach out to um, the individual you were speaking about. And I, I think there's definitely an opportunity there to have her um, engage here and maybe do some volunteering on some sort um, as she can integrate into the, the council. So um, so with volunteers, we're rolling along. Um, we definitely are doing really well with the ambassador role, which as Marie pointed out, there's a lot of folks who uh, were doing some of the reception roles who we've kind of, I don't wanna say handpicked, but to some extent kind of really, you know, reached out to say, hey, you'd be great in this role as ambassador. Um, and so we have eight folks right now who are, um, taking on that role and I've met with them. We've met as a group a few times and we've also met one-on-one -on -one. and actually starting this week, everyone is starting to do a shift each morning just to kind of start getting a feel for sitting there by the kiosk, welcoming people, handling some questions, just kind of being that person. Um, and as they're here, I'm also working with them actively side by side with the iPad to kind of familiarize them more with my senior center, my active center, just kind of preparing them for these are these are what we want you to be um, ready for. What kinds of questions, what kind of assistance to give people and how to kind of navigate that. So it's going really, really well. It's a great group of folks. They are very enthusiastic about the role. They are reporting, at least to me, that they really like the changes as far as what they're doing, but what's been taken off of them in regard to right. this role versus reception. And so I think it's going to be um, much better. Um, again, having um, our folks, our staff assistants and having Cassie on board as a principal clerk, as you guys have all seen, you know, the, the change in the front, we've lowered the desk, everybody's gonna be, you know, coming out front more. There's gonna be a lot more customer service in general for folks, because people are gonna be, you know, kind of on the floor more and kind of visible to, all the members, everybody's kind of taking leads on helping people and being out there and being very visible. I think that's one of the real benefits was having this position at full time is that it's not just someone coming in for two hours here and two hours there and they have, you know, limited periods of time to kind of do certain tasks. This is much more um, buy-in and engagement from that staff in general, like they own this role. They are part, they are an integral part of, of the community here, right? And so um, we can see that taking hold very quickly as far as their interaction with people. So it's a really good thing. Um, Bistro is also going strong. We have a good crew of volunteers, Bob being one of them. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Um, no problem. And we have some nice folks, some old folks who are returning and a couple different folks who have never done the Bistro before who are also helping out. And so that's going really well. Um, sorry, my battery is running really low, so I hope I am not going to run out of steam here. Um, um, but we're doing really well with the bistro. We're picking up with coffee shop. I have a whole list of folks who want to help out with coffee shop, but we, um, as I don't know if Marie mentioned this, but we're still having a little difficulty with our point of sale system. Um, and so we're a little delayed in getting our coffee shop up, up and running, but I do have a whole host of people who are ready to, to, to work on that too. Also gotten some really interesting volunteers. I have a nice gentleman who's a newly retired professor who is bilingual and wants to help do some interpretations some Spanish interpreting with any, in any capacity, which is awesome because we definitely have a need for that, which is fantastic. He's great. So um, that was like a really a wonderful find. Um, so, and we have a student from Smith who's volunteering. He's gonna be uh, start an art course in October, um, a drawing course. So that's kind of a nice thing. And every day, like people are coming, there's been a lot of interest and I'm getting a lot more applications. So we're just kind of sifting through. And as we're, you know, again, 
being thoughtful about everything we're providing, we're reaching out to people and getting them um, back in the fold, so to speak. So, Janet, on that gentleman for Spanish, maybe he could produce a uh, copy of the papers that we hand out to the people who want to join in the handbook in a Spanish version. That's that's actually a great idea. If you could do some, uh, I'm just grabbing a, a, a charger as I'm walking here. <laughs> that's a great idea to kind of have him do a little bit of um, work on that for us. So um, that's awesome. All right, sorry, I'm just gonna plug in because for some reason, and I'm on Zoom on my phone. There, um, it just completely depletes my battery in like two minutes. So sorry about yeah, that. Sure. So I just changed locations. But no, that's a great idea, Bob. And I actually did talk to Marie briefly about that too. Marie had mentioned that same need that in actually translating some material for us, um, some highly used material um, for Spanish. So I'll, I will definitely speak with him about that. Um, and I'm so I think Aji would be willing to help as well. Is she there? She's there. She's not, she's not in her okay, head. Okay, good. Good, good. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, I can't see everybody on screen, so sorry. Yeah, no, she's, um, she, was, she was. Yes. I'm, yes, I can. I can. There you go. <laughs> yeah, she's that's many a time. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah, so that's a good thing. Um, as far as the tech program goes, um, going through some changes with that, but positive changes. We are still working with um, the youth group, the community action, but the group that we used to work with, the gentleman is kind of moving on. And so we're kind of shifting to another type of youth development workforce program. The nice thing about this is, is that this group is centered more in Hampshire County and also Franklin County. Um, they're also a little bit, they're a little bit of an older youth. You know, the folks we're working with were very, very young and they were awesome. They did a wonderful job. This is a little bit more, you know, the 20 somethings and the mid twenties that are a little bit, um, a little bit more progressed, a little more mature and can provide also a little bit of a longer term experience to helping us as far as um, working with that program. So I met with two representatives today, the, the, the um, individual who works out of Hampshire and out of Franklin. And they came and toured the facility. Cause I said, you know, come and come and see the center, come and check us out, know what, you're, what you can offer to your students. Cause I think when people come here, it's a good sell, it's a quick sell, an easy sell for people to say, you know, get excited about coming in. There's a lot of activity, there's a it's really good place. Um, they were thrilled. And what, we've, what we're gonna try to develop with them is to have an individual out of Hampshire County, a student who will be here on site, probably a couple of afternoons a week to offer tech assistance in person. And then with the Franklin County folks, we wanna develop a hotline. Um, a, a dedicated, you know, a couple afternoons, couple days a week, whatever it would be, dedicated kind of help helpline slash hotline for folks who might have tech questions and problems who can reach out and have a warm voice at the other end to say, I'm getting this message on my computer, help, what do I do? Or I forgot how to, you know, get my email, what do I do? So um, really excited I about too. that. And <laughs> I know, right? That's exactly yes. what I said. I said, yeah, I may be their student. I just answered um, my sister-in-law for exactly the same thing. Right, That's exactly. So having that warm voice, right? And the other thing that I would really like to have some develop with a person on site is having them become familiar with my active center um, so that they can also provide some little open tutorial classes for folks here at the center and say, hey, you know, once a week for this hour, whoever wants to come in, let's look at my Active Center and how easy this is to access. This is how you do it. This is how you log in. This is how you pay for something. This is how you can check out to register for a program. So, um, so I'm excited about that. I think that's gonna come along really well and I'm looking forward to kind of starting fresh for myself as well and a new group of students and um, right. having them, the, them more based in, in Hampshire County, I think is gonna be helpful to us. Thank Any questions? You. No. It all sounds great. I love the idea of having the helpline. Yeah. That's what I, I'm with you, Val. When I stopped working, that was the <laughs> one thing. Was like, I didn't have an 800 number I could call anymore. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. I bet that's going to be built in really nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, we heard from that it's all, all sort of crazy. Um, any other questions of Janet? Comments? Thank you. We appreciate it. Sounds like you're keeping yourself busy. 
Oh, it's all going well. Great. Great. And it's been how many, are you, you're not at two months yet, are you? Um, almost exactly. I think it's been just about my anniversary. Okay, so two months, perfect. Yeah, there you go. Two months, yeah. Maybe earlier. But that sounds like an, okay. Um, anything under old business that we need to talk about? See you soon. Uh, See you tomorrow. Enjoy your meeting. Thank you. We can hear you, Michael Ford, carrying on your conversation. <laughs> the cleaning people are leaving. I'm sorry. I tried to <laughs> mute, but so they've left. Now it's just me. We got you, we got you un, undivided. Great. Um, yes. New the new item, new new business. Um, as some of you know, I'm sort of going back to come forward. Um, Highland Valley Elder Services Board of Directors is comprised of representatives from the councils and aging, or most of the councils and aging in, in their service area. Um, that would be us, we are one of them. Kathy Service, longtime COA member who is no longer with us because her terms, and she, could, she had succeeded the ability to, to be reappointed again. Um, is transitioning out of that role. She had been Highland Valley rep, I think, for a while, right, Jerry Ann? She had done that for a while. Yeah, a long time. So they want us to appoint someone to be that person. I've told Marie that I would be willing to do it, but I'm, I want to make sure that there's no one else who wants to do it before me. You know what it entails? There it's are month month monthly board meetings, right, Marie? Yeah. I don't know if they have a committee structure, Bob, but it's definitely a monthly meeting. Um, I'm assuming they're probably been meeting virtually like us. Yeah, I don't know, but probably. And yeah, they, they might ask for subcommittee involvement. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like a small, I looked at one of the board listing on their website is rather small. So that's why I say some of the communities, but not all the communities are represented on their board. I'm sure that Kathy would be willing to talk to anybody who's interested. Yeah, good point, Jean. Thanks. Absolutely. So, Bob, are you interested? Is that what you're, I'm he hearing? None. What it involves. We can talk. Okay. Or we so, can why don't um, why don't I set up a time, Bob? You and I could talk with Kathy Service. Sure. Great. Uh, anything else? I mean, we've come to the end of our agenda. We're being rather efficient at a half an hour in. Um, I was going to say, even though I probably should have said this in announcements, but um, if anyone is interested in listening, Buzz Eisenberg has an HMP, WHMP radio show, and there's a podcast that's about, um, about dementia. And the one of the, one of the guests on the show is a caregiver for her, his wife who has dementia and he had wonderful things to say about the senior center. That's great. So um, we, thank you, Jean, what made me trigger and look back to Marie, to you. Um, do you want to, do we want to share the, hopefully the community, the, the application going in for community compact money? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, it's, on in. Um, so the city has the opportunity to apply for community compact funding um, for establishing best practices. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, an email went out to all department heads saying that they had picked the finance director is submitting one and that there was one other uh, slot. And so um, I wasn't sure I'd get it, but we got it. And um, it's good timing because, you know, of course, the age and dementia friendly planning initiative, um, you know, has been, even though we've made some progress during the pandemic, even with um, help from Pioneer Grove Planning Commission, um, we, we have, you know, we've been slowed down in our, in our working groups and in our goals. So um, this, this fits well into um, some of our goals, which, um, you know, we, we decided at some point that, um, you know, in order for, for us to make the city be age friendly, we really have to start with um, the government system itself, you know, and so if the city offices aren't age friendly, we can't really ask 
all the other agencies and businesses in town to to do it first like so um that's what we'll be focusing on um, is educating city departments, creating some assessment tools um, that they can use to assess their age friendliness and dementia friendliness, and um, and you know looking at all city policies um, to make sure that you know proper language is being used, that proper um, uh, that that our, everyone's mission is aligned also with age friendly and dementia friendly um, goals. So, um, and that's really crucial because so many things get decided in every department um, in the city. And um, if they're not thinking, you know, the way that um, we as a region are trying to get the whole region. I mean, the, the, uh, the governor is really on board with making Massachusetts an age-friendly and dementia-friendly state. So um, it's, a good, it's a good place to start. Um, and then we will continue with our initiative of um, you know, trying to have working groups that are working on these other, um, the, sort of the underpinnings of that on a community level, um, like Cindy and I did at one point, went and talked to the Chamber of Commerce. And, um, you know, that was very educational because um, they, you know, even though age friendly is a buzzword these days, that doesn't mean people actually understand what that means to implement um, and to, to have it trickle down into every part of their organization in terms of implementation and customer service and all of that. So, so anyway, so um, hopefully we'll get, we'll get that money and we'll be partnering with um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to do that work. It's, it's a great, it's a great opportunity and it's um, state money. So it doesn't have to come out of the city budget. Yes. Which is what makes it even more better. <laughs> um, any comments or questions about that? I just thought it, it just occurred to me that I thought it was a helpful thing to add, make sure everyone was aware of. So our next meeting is October 14. I yes, Jerry Ann. I don't want to add a couple of things. Um, just the ambassadors, could we um, tack on what they tell people about Florence Bank? as far as fundraising goes, filling out those forms that people vote for us for, for the money that Florence Bank gives out, that would be very handy money. It, I don't know if you're aware of that, Janet, are you? Okay. Yeah, we and, gotta talk about the box, because the box yeah. is there with ballots in it. <laughs> yeah, we used to have somebody who was hardcore on it. So we got quite a bit of money in years past. I don't know what we've been getting, but it, it's just free money as long as you vote for the senior center. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate you mentioning that, Jerry, because I'm developing kind of like a little cheat sheet, if you will, of like bullet points for the ambassadors to have on hand of, you know, maybe frequently asked questions, things to remember to tell folks. So I'll add that to that list. And then are we going to speak about painting? And did you already talk about that, uh, Marie? I, I don't know if you brought that up in your uh, Yeah. Sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> yep. It's going to start tomorrow. It's going to be zero VOC paint. Oh, okay. Uh, picked, we picked colors, a, a nice, clean, warm white for the whole room, except for the accent wall, which will be um, a deep reddish orange that's very earthy and- um, Terracotta? Called a uh, fire dance. And um, and uh, we did get some feedback of the swatches <laughs> on the wall from people, and you know, most almost everyone liked it. Um, you know, we we had um, a suggestion of doing lavender instead, but we decided not to do that. And um, good. And yeah. uh, and then also the granite countertop that that we picked out is going to be gorgeous. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait to see it all get pulled together. All the pieces yeah, get people are, together. Yeah. people are commenting on the fact that the desk, that the, the height of the desk is lower. They're really, 
they, I mean, I think a lot of people are like, what used to be here? But right. Yeah. But, you know, I, but know I like this, right. It, it feels more welcoming. So get, get, getting rid of that fortress look. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did have to order plexiglass glass barriers, and hopefully that will be a temporary thing because um, we, we really don't want to put up barriers. But um, you know, yeah. But but every, I, I, these days everyone's so you, you they're, they're everywhere you go. Yeah. So it's not like we're going to stick out as being right. unique. Yeah. The, the creamy wall covering is wall color is beautiful against the the wood uh, wainscoting, it looks yeah. great. I, it's I gonna that, bright, brighten up the whole space. Yeah. I'm still out on the uh, burnt red fire. <laughs> you know, I like the darker of the two colors, but um, I, I just don't want people getting fiery <laughs> at us with that in the background. <laughs> well, that does, I don't want that to stimulate fire. <laughs> well, sometimes that, that fire is already within, so. Yes, but, and, it's all, and it's just paint. It's not like it's permanent. Right. So anything else before, um, any topics that we want to see on the agenda for October 14? Hmm. Well, um, we're going to be, meet, I assume we're still in a virtual meeting situation. Yes. I mean, uh, until the city works out hybrid um, technology stuff, that's what we need to do. Um, but I mean, I'm anticipating that, um, you know, hopefully by that point, um, I'll know when the flooring's getting done and we might be able to start talking about um, planning a grand opening. Um, and yeah. You know, I don't want to do a grand opening if Delta is still really strong. So, you know, because I really want it to be a celebration. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, it sounds like the, the Board of Health is being really helpful in providing guidance. And I would say that as long as we're in the heightened guidance of, you know, the super masking protocol, why would we want to do any big gathering? Right. Right. Now, is Board of Health meaning about a uh, center for the booster, if that turns out to be something that everybody needs? Um, well, so far... Um... You know the conversations I've had with the Board of Health about our use of space for that, because the, if they're you know they are doing they are going to be doing boosters, but um, uh, you know that that could be complicated if people are coming here. Um, it, you know, not sure how that would work. So, you know, we're talking about what their needs are going forward, but. Um, and I think, I think, Bob, from what I've been reading, and I think it's also tentative, is that the distribution model for boosters is likely to be vastly different with mm -hmm. much more available in medical offices, not as centrally concentrated as we had experienced with the first two doses. Well, if they're still going to be using the one that requires the high refrigeration, there's still plenty of doctor's offices that aren't equipped to handle right. Pfizer. But I, I, my sense of what, and I was, I had a doctor's put myself a week ago and it was their expectation that they would, when, when all this was settled, that they would be getting it. Um, much unlike their inability to get it this last time. Yeah, I mean, and I expressed my concerns just like, we always have problems with parking here. And I mean, it's not, I mean, I also don't want to be exposing our patrons to the general public, which, so if the general public is getting boosters, you know, that's, we're just trying to keep them at, to a minimum, but, but also we just are always running up against parking issues. And so anything big happening here is not a good idea. If we are going to be functioning at our normal, you know, operations, if, if we're yeah. not, then that's a different story. But for now we're proceeding as if we're going back towards something normal. Okay. <laughs> whatever <You're> normal <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking okay. of parking has anybody gone over to the cheese factory across the street and i don't think they're open to the public yet oh is that going to be cheese i'd forgotten that they're, they're making cheese over there yeah really they, they, so how many parking spaces do cheese makers need <laughs> where yeah. good question 
the old war, war, World War II, oh. the Deuce. The Deuce is now owned by a cheese making per people from Ashfield. Nice people, so I'm sure they'll, you know, you just need to. For larger events, they might be willing to share their parking. I, I have talked to them about the parking and um, until they expand and have events going on there, um, you know, that we're on a, you know, case by case basis for events, but, but our staff will be parking over there. Um, That's great. Yeah. That's great. Anything else that, for this meeting, anything, uh, one last request for anything you wanna see in the agenda for the 14th? Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Bob seconded. Yep. Um, so I say we are adjourned. We'll see folks in October when and newly painted walls before then. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.